If you correctly set up your approach, you should be able to step, not jump from the float, and will have a docking line in your hand ready to secure your aircraft to the dock. Keep in mind it's very difficult to hold an airplane against an offshore breeze or strong current. Maneuvering a float plane around docks is made easier with a set of handling ropes permanently fastened to various parts of the aircraft. Short lines could be attached to the wing strut tie-down rings. In flight, they will trail freely. Select the length that will not interfere with flaps and ailerons. It's also useful to have lines attached to the base of the float struts. Make sure that they don't interfere with the water rudders. They facilitate the handling and securing of the aircraft as they're readily available at all times. When departing, always plan your taxi route before starting your engine. By the time you cast the mooring lines and climb into the cockpit to start the engine, you'll be drifting either away from or toward obstructions. In the absence of current, the normal behavior of any float plane will be to weather vane into the wind and drift backwards with it. With float flying, the terrain, obstacles and the wind are taken into consideration when deciding if you should depart up or downstream. Generally, taking off downstream or downwind requires a longer water run. When the wind direction is opposite to the current, you have to decide which one will have the strongest influence on your takeoff run. Finally, you'll experience the best takeoff performance when departing against the current and into the wind. When flying into areas that have tides or fast-moving water, a good knowledge of how to deal with them is important, and if possible, get some training from someone knowledgeable with float operations in moving water.